Hello. There's no doubt that the threat landscape is evolving, that cyber criminals are tightly focused on financial reward, and that we are more exposed to those threats than ever before. But proponents of artificial intelligence, or AI, say they've found a way of preventing attacks before they occur. So, AI has now taken centre stage in the cybersecurity industry and consists of adaptive or machine learning algorithms with the potential to identify and respond to threats as they occur. With many security professionals no longer trusting traditional antivirus systems, AI seems to be the next logical step. But is this solution good enough? Let's find out by asking key industry players and analysts what AI means for cybersecurity. So artificial intelligence is a term that is relatively overused, not only in the security space, but in industry at large these days. But it actually does refer to a couple of techniques that can be really valuable for security. Um, one is in classification, so we can look at features of incoming data to predict whether or not this data is potentially malicious or safe for an environment. Um, others involve uh, techniques to determine anomalies, detect anomalies, processing data relatively quickly in real time, so treating incoming data as a stream as opposed to collecting every single point, and then using algorithms that can track what uh, standards of behavior that seem to qualify as normal and look for deviations thereupon that might signify that there's been an intrusion or hack. And then the third uses a technique called probabilistic programming, which is a set of um, a computational language that doesn't write computer programs deterministically using if-then rules, but can set out a distribution of probabilities. And there's some very interesting work by some researchers up in Boston at Charles Weber Analytics to actually do a whole genealogy of malware so that we can track the history of these, of these infectious diseases to inform future responses. Well, AI, which is artificial intelligence, is really sort of a, it's a computerized version of the human intelligence machine that we have. And the way that the intelligence works inside of a computer is it, it sort of learns over and over and over again, iteratively, just like a human being would learn. But you have to start with a human teaching it first. And then every single time it tries to get better and better and better, you need to also introduce corrective actions. So if it identifies a, a, a cat in a picture that really there is no cat, you need to tell it, nope, you were wrong, that's not a cat, and try it over and over again, just like a child would. So for cybersecurity, what it is, you can apply AI to almost any problem set inside cybersecurity. There's the problem of execution on the endpoint, things like malware and cyber attacks at the endpoint, APTs. There's uh, second problem, which is around authentication-based attacks, so guessing passwords and bypassing passwords. And then the third main form of attack in cyberspace is really around denial of service and actually injuring the asset in some way where it does not come back up. So all three of those areas of field could have AI applied to them to help get ahead of the adversary. I think it's actually taking the academic principle of applying machines and what it can do without human intervention to solve a serious problem. What I believe is that cybersecurity has been a perfect market for it because there's so much variability in the objects and the items that need to be applied a principle that only math can solve. Really, uh, we've been trying to solve a very hard problem of identifying what's bad and understanding what's good through humans understanding the principles of how artificial intelligence takes the human out of that has been, a, a, frankly, a game changer in our particular industry. So now we understand AI, how does it help enterprises stay a step ahead of today's threats? So some of the new algorithms uh, that fall under the umbrella of artificial intelligence are neural networks, deep learning algorithms that basically are able to process data, process lots of data in relatively rapid form and uh, discern out features of all sorts of things, be that pictures on the internet, text, or in this particular case, um, incoming potentially malicious, malicious viruses, uh, and use those features to make decisions as to whether or not things are good or bad. And these neural nets are they're complex and they're hard for humans to interpret, which can be an obstacle to adoption in certain types of situations where we're using them to diagnose diseases, we're using them to do, to make decisions that humans make and could impact human lives. 
But this same complexity and lack of interpretability is fantastic when fighting adversaries because it's really hard for us to figure out exactly what they're using to make their decisions. And because it's hard for the programmers to do so, it's also hard for the adversaries. So they, this black box characteristic um, is, is relatively powerful as a, as a deterrent for malicious events. So the way AI helps for enterprises to stay ahead of the threats is real simple. It, if done well, it actually learns enough from the past to never make a mistake in the future. And the reason why that's important is because pretty much every attack that's ever been made or could be made has been done in the past already. So there's nothing new. So tomorrow's attack is not new, it's just new to you or me. Like you and I maybe haven't seen it before, but the world somewhere out there has seen it. And if you train on enough data that's inclusive of all of those areas around the world where attacks would occur, then you can actually train it properly to detect the new thing that's coming out even though it's not really new. Well, I think it's been fantastic in the sense that AI does two things. One, and certain vendors are applying it in a way to understand the threat itself and to be able to provide further intelligence. In other ways, artificial intelligence is being used to automate what a human might actually do. And so I think there's two applications in our particular industry that are being beneficial to propagate, frankly, the principles and the theories that are being applied in academia into the real world. If AI is so good, what's the future for traditional security solutions? So I think there's a big, as with adoption of AI in other areas across the enterprise, one of the big shifts here that's hard for organizations to grapple with is that these systems are probabilistic as opposed to deterministic, which means their output is not concrete. They can give output and they say, we're, we're sure of this with 75% confidence or 60% confidence, et cetera. And most people aren't comfortable working with probabilities. They want to have a little bit more certainty in their lives. And it becomes difficult to actually get used to these new systems. And similarly, in the security space, we've seen a shift also from prevention-oriented tools, where we're, we're blocking out networks so as to keep, to keep malicious actors out, to a, a different type of mentality where we assume that some malicious actors are going to get in and shift from prevention, absolute prevention, to more probabilistic risk management. And this requires a set of processes, a set of skills and expertise that a lot of the existing security community doesn't come equipped with. So I think there's going to be not only um, new tools on the market, but also new skills and processes internal and enterprises that will have to be developed to, to use these new AI systems, as well as adequately address the risks in the 21st century. Well, the future for traditional security solutions is waning, that's for sure. Um, we've only had really our technology be the, the first real manifestation of applied AI into cybersecurity. And that makes it a little challenging because we know that there are other opportunities. We know there are other companies that can take advantage of AI in the cybersecurity space. We just haven't seen it done yet. So it, they will eventually, and when they do, they'll start to eliminate the need for that legacy or traditional antivirus or any kind of solution. Uh, really, I call it signature-based solutions. So if you need to know what you're looking for before you find it, you won't find half of the stuff you're looking for because uh, it's just too hard to know everything in the past without AI. And so I think the role for traditional security solutions is waning rather precipitously. I think what we're, we're finding is that the number of, a number of type of, of attacks is increasing, if not day on day, certainly week on week, month on month, uh, and the very manual sort of personnel intensive analysis and capture of that just isn't viable. We just can't expand by adding more and more security analysts. So I think we are seeing a, a, a tipping point whereby we need some automation tools of some description. Uh, AI happens to be one that seems to fit fairly well. If those companies are going to be able to continue to provide the products for the same price or expand their market to look at new threats in any kind of way where either enterprise or ultimately sort of consumer purchasers are, are going to be prepared to pay the money required to do that. I think traditional securities ought to be concerned, frankly. Uh, they will quickly fall out of favor due to the operational impact of what they require today, 
as well as the fact that the value is diminishing very rapidly relative to what they used to be able to do without artificial intelligence. So we're seeing uh, already great vendors like Javelin Networks applying this to operationalize what would be done to actually look for, detect, and stop attackers in the act. And finally, let's get the analyst's view on the future for AI in security. It's an interesting one. I mean, the, the, the whole deep learning space at the moment, which is, is, is so hot and so, uh, so interesting across multiple dimensions, is all driven by those massive data sets. So, you know, is it, you know, Netflix viewing preferences? Is it autonomous car data? Is it image recognition? Security is one of those where we are generating so much data every minute, every hour, every day. And it's also one of those things where you want as fast a response as possible. So take the combination of historical data sets that you can train a deep learning algorithm with uh, and the need for very quick response, which those, that army of old fashioned traditional security analysts wouldn't give you. And it becomes a very good candidate for, for AI. The danger is, of course, that, that what these things are good at is recognizing existing behavior. And by definition, a lot of the malware that we come across is brand new. It's something that nobody expected somebody to try. Uh, and there is that danger that certainly that will get through an AI algorithm initially, very quickly picked up, hopefully. But that, that you know, it's, ex it's behavior that the AI didn't expect and is so far out of its realm of previous experience that it's going to you know, throw a wobbly or just let it through or, or raise it hopefully to, to, to an operator and say this looks a bit strange. So that aside, I think the speed and the, the scalability of the AI solution makes it a really good match for those detecting those cyber threats. So the future looks positive for artificial intelligence. Is this the start of a new way to combat malware? Time will tell. <laughs>